Hi, it's Tara Green and it's November the 6th and I'm going to bring you a little bit of weekend astrology here. Now the moon has entered Sagittarius. So with the moon, you always take the pulse and the mood of the people. So fiery, optimistic, good humored, um, you know, let's live it up. Let's ask the big questions. Let's tell the truth, brutally honest. Uh, moon and Sag. So I have my moon and Sag in Italy, so I will have my lunar return. Everybody also has the moon and Sag. We'll experience that for most of the weekend. So with the moon and Sag, our minds want to be free. Um, we're interested in justice. We're interested in building rainbow bridges. We're interested in truth. We're ruled by the planet Jupiter. So it's always expansive, optimistic. Moon and Sag loves animals and know they can be very easy going very you know do whatever you want to do so the moon sextile saturn aquarius so that's a nice positive aspect so our minds are feel free to roam that sagittarius don't fence me in so the moon sag trines chiron and aries so so we're going to feel other people's wounds we want to talk about it we want to expose the truth uh about where we're damaged goods i would say now Mercury, newly in Scorpio since the 5th, sextiles Venus and Capricorn. They're both new newly entered. Those signs, they just entered on the 5th. So they're kind of holding hands with each other. So Mercury and Scorpio, very insightful, very obsessive, very sexual, very passionate, very secretive, very much about power and control, very magnetic. So our minds are going to really obsess uh, over what it is we desire. So sextiling Venus and Capricorn, she's usually pretty dry, Venus and Capricorn. She's got her business suit on. She's all business. Like, love is like, show me, you know? Uh, I think there's that song from My Fair Lady, you know, don't talk of love lasting through time. Don't talk at all, show me. So that's Venus and Capricorn. Um, yeah, get some practical work done based on those intense insights, you know, and just stick with it. The moon and Sag in conjuncts Uranus and Taurus. So in conjuncts are when planets are at 150 degree angles apart. Uranus and Taurus, you know, plodding along there. Um, the bull, you know, storming the crypto world, the cyber world, you know, uh, being transformed. So the moon and Sag, you know, is pretty optimistic, but that's, you know, kind of feels like it meets a wall there. Um, so you have to find some other way to maneuver. Now on the 7th, the Moon and Sag continues for most of the day. The Moon and Sag squares Neptune and Pisces. And that's early in the morning and Eastern daylight time. And it is, sorry, uh, daylight savings, savings time ends on the 7th at 2 a.m. And so we fall back. So we lose an hour at that point of sleep. But with the Moon squaring Neptune and Pisces, which is all about the dreaming, um... Well, you might get an extra hour of sleep then. Uh, it's good for dreaming, good for traveling, good for past life uh, intentions, good for lucid dreaming, mystical dreaming. Get your angels, get your spirit guides to show up and give you the messages about what your direction needs to be. Uh, and don't surprise if it comes in a funny way. Okay, so the moon is Sag, sextiles Jupiter and Aquarius. Now Jupiter rules the sign of Sagittarius and it rules the sign of Pisces. So... They're in a nice aspect here. Uh, Jupiter and Aquarius, again, open-mindedness, wanting freedom, wanting to travel, wanting to change things, want to invent, want to be pioneering, want to take some risks. Again, a crypto world, Jupiter and Aquarius. And then the moon goes void, of course, early in the morning there, 8.44 a.m. The later print is Eastern Standard Time now. Um, and the moon is void, of course. So while the moon is void, of course, and it's void, of course, for most of the day, it's almost 12 hours. So it is a Sunday. So really just chill. Uh, I think the energy has been very intense since that last new moon. And there's also been those big surprising solar flares affecting our electromagnetic fields and, you know, really being um, kind of amping up the energy. The new moon in Scorpio was very, very intense, right? Opposite Uranus. Uh, so there's been a lot of chaos, a lot of sudden change. And then the moon enters Capricorn at 8.03 p.m. Again, I have to get used to saying daylight savings time now. So it helps us to feel really grounded. I could hear that cathod is our, you know, we get off our high horses there where we're, you know, uh, running through Sagittarius Freedom Territory. And then we got to land. we got to get off the horses. we got to get our feet on the ground. 
So for the next two and a half days with the moon in Capricorn, again, it's very practical, um, very responsible, much more maturing. You can feel kind of heaviness. The heaviness, moon in Capricorn, is much more heavy. And then the moon conjuncts Venus. Now this is in, of course, Pacific daylight time. Uh, it will happen on the 8th. And then the moon sextiles Mercury and Scorpio as well. So, you know, those are good aspects, uh, positive aspects. Again, you pay attention to the nature of your dreams because, you know, whatever sign the moon is transiting through, because, the, of course, we dream under the moon, uh, you pay attention if your dreams, like landscape and the characters and the tone of the dreams, change according to what sign the moon is passing through. So with the moon in Capricorn, it's a good time to work with your ancestors. It's a good time to call them up, to ask for them to help you. You know, Saturn is history, the family. Um, moon in Capricorn, work with your ancestors, get some practical insights, you know, ask for very practical plans and long-term goals and just past life stuff. Capricorn seems past life stuff. Um, yeah, very practical results with the moon in Capricorn. Okay, so I want to wish you all the best on the weekend. And if you want to follow me on my blog, it's at infinitynow.wordpress.com. Please subscribe to me on my YouTube channel. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on TikTok sometimes. Uh, follow me on my website at terratero.com. If you want to find out about my workshops, I'm going to be doing a live uh, the next, this, the, this, the, um, <laughs> sorry, I can't talk. The next, um, Eclipse uh, that's coming up. It's going to be one of the longest for a long time. A almost total lunar eclipse, November 19th, and that is at 27 degrees of Scorpio opposite Algol, uh, where, you know, stuff happens. <laughs> All right, so speak to you soon. Uh,